No, I think, uh, of course, uh, I think the, the, the discussion before raised up a lot of really interesting questions. And um, I think then uh, what would be also really interesting then uh, is try to connect what we have previously said with what they are going to present now. Because I think also what uh, uh, you will present uh, uh, is also related to the idea of the rethinking the concept of privacy somehow. Because, uh, um, uh, I mean, you have the book with you. Uh, and uh, uh, their object that they brought today is the um, uh, archive that Weise Sieben, the group of Julian and, uh, and uh, Dania are part of, relies after the incompatible laboratorium uh, exhibition that they did uh, uh, at the House of Culture and the Welt. Uh, in the in the show in the in the frame of our labor Berlin and uh, you will say more about this book but I can uh, introduce that is not really a proper book is more uh, an internet independent in uh, an internet uh, independent wireless server so when you open the book you have actually a server that uh, is uh, uh, then possible to connect so I think uh, um, the book is actually also really connected uh, with the idea of uh, openness and also critically rethinking what privacy is because basically you are providing all the content of the book for the people that want to access the server uh, you are uh, uh, publicly uh, sharing. So uh, I'm actually also interested uh, in this kind of framework of your project and also how you relate with the idea of uh, uh, openness and post-privacy if you want. So maybe you can also say a bit uh, the background of the project and also why you came up with this idea of having uh, an open server as a form of an artistic project. Thanks for the epic uh, introduction. That was good. Um, yeah, I'm Julian Oliver. I'm Daniel Vasilev. And he should have a mic of his own. <laughs> And there is another colleague of ours, Brendan Howell. Brendan uh, Howell, present in, in, in the audience. There's six of us in the studio in uh, Weiserstrasse 7, which is in the Schiller Keats. It's very near um, uh, Tempelhof, up in uh, Neukölln. And um, and yes, uh, at about October last year, we we embarked on a on a really big project um, that en encompassed an exhibition, a workshop series, and this book production. And it was in collaboration with um, Lab Labor Berlin, um, and the exhibition was in the Haus der Kultur und der Welt. Um, and uh, the exhibition itself was curated by, um, by uh, Christopher Gansing here, the, um, the artistic director of Transmedial. And um, we were given, as, as part of the, um, the project, an opportunity to come up with, with a book. And we could have just simply come up with, obviously, a normal catalogue of some sort. But we decided to do something quite unusual that expressed um, a lot of what we're into at the studio, which is really engaging um, engineering as a, as a critical and creative um, uh, language. And so we, we made a book which, which is also an um, a, a, a internet-independent uh, wireless server that looks like a normal German textbook of sorts. And you can open it up. You do it. So you open up, and then the, it looks like a, a normal first page there, for instance. It's relatively normal, looks like a book. And turn the next page. We see a credits page, looking after all our sponsors and the like. Turn another page, and another one. Keep yep, keep going. And then there's a little computer in the back. And the computer was custom designed by one of the studio members, Bengt Siolen. And um, it's uh, got typography and the like on it. And that when when one opens the book, this, the, the, the machine boots. It creates an internet-independent wireless network, so you can read it in, in the ocean or in a cave or in the sub-Saharan desert. And, um, and on the book, um, you'll have an opportunity, if you've got a laptop or a smartphone or the like, or a tablet computer to, to browse it. I'm sure Danya has one or two things to say, of course. Well, uh, we brought one exemplar of a book which actually has the batteries because we don't... Uh, sell these books with batteries <laughs> uh, just for the reasons of uh, environmental sustainability uh, however this exemplar uh, has batteries inside and I can invite all of you 
or those of you who have uh, smartphones or laptops or uh, tablet computers with. Uh, you can connect to this book. The wireless network is going to be called Visa Zeban Archive. And once you connect to this wireless network, you, if you try to navigate to any website, you will end up inside the book. And once there, you can navigate through the archive uh, and documentation of quite a lot of work that's been done by our collective in the last half a year, including the exhibition uh, at Haus der Kultur der Welt, as well as uh, some additional documentation and the documented process of uh, the book production itself. And I think to, to add to the conversation uh, that was just before uh, here, probably the different take that we are not not proposing but sort of suggesting with uh, with this edition is to walk away from the very root of the problems that were just discussed, walk away from the internet itself and rather than solving the problems about uh, disturbing qualities of the global network, uh, try to rethink the communication strategies and probably materialize some of this digital information uh, together with regaining uh, the qualities such as control, uh, which is to us much more uh, natural to control a physical thing rather than uh, uh, metaphysical. So this book is a proposition for an internet independent uh, data exchange, data, data archival and, uh, and presentation. And if, uh, if those of you with computers manage to, uh, to get to the book, you... Is anyone connected to the, to the book? No, Archive by Zeeban? Was it it? Or is it still running? Yeah, it is running. Okay, I'll close it and open it again. Well, a reboot? Yep, reboot. <laughs> Actually, this will be the test the most people have connected, have connected to it uh, simultaneously. So, yes, it'll be a real test for our little, our little server. Well, um, I can try myself. Yeah, maybe we'll just get it up on the tablet. I think the most we've had is about five simultaneous connections. So, let's just see how it goes. It's working. It's working, great. It is, okay. So, you can... Yeah, the, the, the idea is, this, this isn't the website that's on the book, but um, we have um, plenty of um, information on, the, on, on there that does, as Dunya was just saying, relate to the specifics of the exhibition, but a little bit more than just mere photographs and text. We have, um, we have uh, information of the sort, um, of source code and, and PDFs and schematics. In fact, the actual design that Banks Yolden came up with for the book itself um, is on the book. So you can, you can download all of the the schematics required to actually print that board yourself. You could even modify that computer and get it, get it printed in, in China or Taiwan and get it sent to your house. You could, you could put your own typography on it if you like. So the, the whole book itself is as an expression of its own, of its own design and of its own, um, of its own inner workings extends right into the, um, into the specifics of the exhibition itself with a lot of the source code of, of, of some of the works in the exhibition. Um, are you, are you connected? Uh, I think it's uh, also interesting to add that, in fact, the exhibition itself, uh, the majority of work that's been presented during uh, our time at Haus der Kultur in der Welt as part of uh, uh, external transmediale program, uh, most of the works uh, did connect, did talk about uh, about the about the internet as we know it and. Uh, were mainly critical uh, to the current structure, to the current uh, workings of the internet. And again, if you uh, do read our book, you can uh, navigate uh, through and read about each of the projects that was uh, presented uh, at our exhibition. Uh, probably after, after, shortly after, after we are done with uh, talking about the book, we can uh, go a bit deeper into mm, some of the projects. Yeah. Discussion of uh, some some of the projects, and uh, there's this there's this there's this idea that that I mean it's it's almost like we've moved into a realm of 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 
Val Valhalla has entered the, the, the modern rational world with the internet. It's become this mythic reel that supposedly en encapsulates all. One can even refer to it in the context of infrastructure and control as a kind of a closed world, especially as it is, as, it is, um, as access to it is increasingly um, politicized act by act. And, um, and by, by make, making a book which publishes into the air and it creates an intimate connection with the book, um, distributed onto the screens in its in its environment, um, it's 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 kind of returning to a more um, present and intimate conversation about computer networking itself. This idea that to network one doesn't have to necessarily be on the internet. That the, there is networking and there's 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 the internet, and that can a website doesn't have to be on the internet. It's possible for there to be an independence. That still shares those those the, those the same experiences and uh, and um, content distribution models. There is quite some contradiction uh, between owning a personal computer and having that computer being connected to the internet. Uh, as Julia and I said several times in our presentations uh, earlier, that it is in fact became an oxymoron uh, to call a network computer to be a personal device. Uh, once any machine, uh, once any uh, uh, TCP IP capable device uh, goes online, it stops being uh, privately owned, privately uh, uh, accessed uh, machine. It becomes part of a much bigger machine which uh, is not seen by many as, a, as something uh, singular. However, it has all the qualities uh, for being a singular device. Uh, for instance, its uh, ability uh, or ability, not ability, but quality of the internet uh, to be very well monitored and to be uh, very well uh, controlled simply due to uh, the very architecture of the network, uh, the very uh, uh, underlying architecture that the internet relies on. And uh, these facts are often uh, disregarded and, and, and as we heard just before, uh, there is a long discussion like what should we, how can we uh, avoid these uh, issues connected to the, to the very structure of the internet. And from our perspective, uh, as we exemplify with the book, there can be, uh, we can think, we can try to take a different route and find a, probably find a, not, a, not a solution, but maybe just experiment with different, uh, with different uh, ways of, uh, of re rethinking with the distribution models and rethinking with uh, how we actually exchange the information that we, uh, that we possess. And if in, if in fact this information has to be uh, globally public, mm. because, uh, the device, the book that we've created, it is, uh, it is, a, it is a publicly accessible uh, device. However, the owner of this book still remains under complete control of the users and the dissemination of the information contained within the device, within the book, because the owner can simply shut the book and effectively shut off the access to the contained information. And uh, from our perspective, uh, when we thought about this book, this is an interesting uh, a, a, a example of uh, actually controlling the data that you want or not to be disseminated. It, it is a, uh, also the fact that we put, uh, we put our wireless digital publication in the shape of a book was to uh, constitute its, uh, its physical qualities such as uh, f physical, physical limitation to, for its success. Mm. It's really, it's really important to actually that the board itself is exposed and its inner workings and it des its designs are also exposed. Um, again, returning to this, returning to this mythic, um, 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 largely disempowering um, situation that we're in right now. You can ask anyone, for instance, um, how the postcard that you sent them arrived into their um, into their mailbox, their physical mailbox, and that will give you a relatively coherent description of that postcard's traversal. They will even, even if they've never been behind the counter of a, of a post office, they will be able to. T they will be able to tell you about the Postleitzahl. They'll be able to tell you about the. Um, they'll be able to tell you that there's probably an indexing system that involves alphabetical 
um, uh, hierarchies um, underneath that, um, that, um, that postcode, et cetera, et cetera. But if you ask them how the email that you sent them arrived in their inbox, they would be reliant on, on high surrealism to, in order to be able to describe it. It would, be better to, it would be better to submit it to a poetry journal than it would to, than it would to actually describe the inner workings of that, um, of, of, of that process. And so, again, the mythic. I mean, if, if, if we can't describe our networked environment, if we can't describe how all this stuff works, stuff that's increasingly being used in the taxation system right through to infrastructure, um, uh, regulating the flow of water and um, insulin pumps and hospitals and the like. Um, if we can't describe our, our, our environment in a technical context, even just a little bit, we can't describe our world. Um, we can't describe the world that we're actually living in. And, and this, this is a remarkable thing, really. I mean, you compare it to a gramophone, where you see the, the old gramophone, you see the, the, the horn coming out where the sound comes out, and you see the record. It's a self-describing object, and open up an iPod Nano, and and ask anyone how how it works. They they will not be able to tell you, you know. And and this 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 is a it's, it's necessary to 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 bite that big heavy piece of um, of dried bread, um, we call the the vocabulary of, of of engineering a little bit, and um, and just chew through it enough to be able to return to a, a more grounded position, a more critically empowered position, and the the, the book in many ways is a direct uh, manifestation of that agenda in that it, it, it fully expresses itself. Um, the cloud is, is, a, is a very, very silly, um, I mean, uh, some people call it the cloud, those that know call it the internet, you know, but there's this, this, this idea that you put your stuff into the cloud, you know, it's, it's remarkable. We're, we, 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 we're just reduced to children's drawings, essentially, um, to describe something that we're actually dependent upon. Mm. It is probably also <coughs> one of the guides to what can be called media archaeology, mm. where, whether instead of uh, where you actually dig into the chip, you dig into the, uh, as Julian said, into the rock of the technology, which is otherwise unseen, otherwise uh, unrecognized and unknown, and you, you bite into it just in order to actually understand what is this uh, black uh, silicon uh, thing that we are so often dealing with, and the internet is no is no different. It it might be uh, it might have different uh, s structure, but in its essence, in a, in in terms of being a black box, it it it's no it's no different to any uh, modern electronic device. When looking at uh, at which you the only thing you see is a, indeed the a, uh, black squares of the chips that it's made of. And uh, the effort in making this book was also to, pro to propose or to exemplify this uh, interest in actually producing networks and producing devices on your own. Because uh, first, of course, it's, it, is, it is a very empowering uh, process. You, you get to understand a lot about uh, the inner workings of the device, the inner workings of the network. But the, uh, the product th that we ended up with uh, allows us for, for something we wouldn't have uh, on the internet. And I think that is a very interesting quality that you can produce networks on your own. You don't need to be depend dependent on basically governmentally run infrastructure uh, of the internet and you can use very, very same technology. You don't have to walk away from uh, networking protocols. You don't need to walk away from even the end user devices. You can still use them uh, as they are. You can sort of repurpose them, if you will. You can rip them out from the context of the internet and plug them into uh, yeah. a completely new localized, personalized, if you will, <laughs> context of uh, private networks. Yes, it's, it's, a really, it's a really good point that we, we, we don't even, um, we don't even su supplant or displace or, or, or appropriate or pervert our own hardware. In fact, there's even now um, regulations, to, you know, ever, ever growing um, list of regulations in place to make sure that we can't even void the warranty. You know, by, by, by opening up our devices, we're voiding the warranty. I mean, and what is voiding the warranty on the internet now? You know, it's with um, data retention laws and, and the like. I, I even have, have, uh, have heard talk of a, of a friend in the US saying that they can't even open up their own router, um, that they're not allowed to physically open up their own router in their house. Yeah, because uh, they didn't buy it, they were... 
it, lented. it was lented, and, and much of the much of the uh, of the hardware that we actually sleep next to is is is, is in fact more of a more of a leased mm -hmm. or rented like relationship. And being remotely updated mm. and. It, it's, and it's less owned by us and more owned by the um, by the by the infrastructure, if you like. Rather ironically, um, however, all this talk of independence in the context of our book, um, uh, our book is not independent enough from electricity, and the batteries have in fact run out. Um, so um, yeah, we're, we're, we're the books. The book is um, is of course. But it would be lovely to have like maybe a, a pedal pedaling you know generator or something like that, or a little water wheel, and you could sort of sit it next to a river and. Talk to LPC people. Yeah, talk to the one, lap, one laptop per child people. Um, but yeah, we can talk a, a little bit very, very briefly um, about um, about the exhibition. Um, we'll, so we'll talk about three pieces. Um, we'll talk about a piece that um, I did, a piece that Danya did, and um, Brendan can maybe quickly come up and talk about his. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the um, pictures of, of Brendan's piece here, um, but he can describe it. Um, yeah. Yeah, we are not online here. That's great. Yeah, so um, I will talk about this um, this project here, um, which is going to be consistently moving. Lovely, um, the transparency um, uh, grenade, which I made for the um, for the exhibition, and it's a it's a hand grenade, um, effectively a, a weapon in the form of a Soviet F1 uh, hand grenade, and it's made of uh, silver and um, and uh, and a resin, pr a printable resin, and the inside it's got a it's got a tiny little computer. And a, um, a little 3.7 uh, volt um, uh, battery pack, and a, a, a little board antenna. And when one pulls the pin on the hand grenade, it uh, captures all of the voice data in your room, in the room that you're in, and all of the network um, packets in your immediate context, and tunnels it up to uh, my server, where it's where that information is then mined in the forms of JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, email fragments, and HTML fragments at the at the site, roughly of the of the detonation. So it's a it's sort of a, a way of um, um, it, it's 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 an it's, it's an ironic comment in some respects, obviously taking the form of a of a weapon and going into the Bundestag with a grenade in your pocket may not work out very well for you, and you you need to probably call your mother first. Um, but um, but the, the, yeah, the idea is simply to um, to contain in the form of of of, of an anxious object, of an of an anxiety producing object, of a fearful object, um, many of the tensions surrounding. Um, the containment of information, and, and the very idea, as Daniel said before, the oxymoron of a personal computer on the internet. Um, when your computer is, is connected to the internet, it is uh, it is depersonalized. It is it is publicized, and um, yeah, and the, the grenade explores some of those tensions. And I'm currently working on an Android application um, for rooted Android phones, such that it can run silently in the background, and you can start um, you can detonate. Uh, in, in any network context. And um, Daniel can talk about his project. So we have only five minutes left. Oh, shit. Okay. okay. Well, okay. we can run through it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of these pictures depicts uh, my work, uh, the work that I did for Weiser Zibben and Incompatible Laboratorium <laughs> exhibition at HKW. Uh, it's called Netless, in fact, Netless 2, and it is a model of a digital network based on a city, sort of city native infrastructure, such as uh, public transport infrastructure. And I think to, s to, s to say very briefly, uh, that is an attempt to, to model a city which would be independent from traditional uh, traditional networking infrastructure such as cables and replace that with already existing infrastructure that makes people go around, uh, makes uh, uh, city traffic. Uh, so my, my, my proposal sort of was to uh, use city transport to transport network packets. Uh, so essentially a netless device is a is a node of a, of a completely uh, f uh, flat network where each node uh, has exactly the same role. And these devices, the soup of these uh, devices, allows for some, some type of a mesh network which allows data distribution, sort of parasitic da data distribution, once the devices uh, go around the city uh, if they are attached onto vehicles or they carried by uh, pedestrians. 
so uh, the idea is to disconnect from traditional and as I said probably before governmentally owned 99% of a chance uh, uh, communication channels and create somewhat again more privately driven and probably sort of like a grassroots network where the network itself and not just the information belongs to the uh, to its participants the participants create the network it's not uh, user contributed content but it's user contributed network and uh, in in this perspective it it, it breaks uh, it breaks pretty much all of the observation logic uh, that the internet currently has uh, from being a panoptical structure uh, it uh, this kind of network uh, localizes to, to to each node and each node is uh, can decide whether it has to drop out or drop in to the network and participate or not uh, be one of the mediums of sharing or not and um, yeah I think if I if I, if I, also, <laughs> if I will uh, speak more it will take lo uh, much longer uh, shall we invite Brandon here um, all right so I guess what I was interested in was the issue of uh, if you're using some kind of social networking what is the I guess you could call it the phenomenology what's the actual everyday experience like and my theory was that people the part of the attraction of social networking is this desire to be in the here and now but not in the here and now is in like some sort of Zen I'm in this room and I'm appreciating every sensation it's more in the media sense of the here and now that I know exactly what is happening in the media environment in this moment and so what I did was I basically built a machine that um, as you, so it it's a giant mouse that's made of fiberglass that's like a meter and a half long. And you can sit on the mouse and it has a scroll wheel. And as you scroll faster and faster, you get more and more updates that are more and more up to date. So the initial updates that you get are old. And then by the time you're scrolling at 60 frames a second, you have this sort of uh, tunnel effect and you're getting a live up to the second or up to the millisecond update from Twitter. So you can't actually read it that fast, but that's, uh, I guess what I was going for was to try and replicate the sensation of uh, the impossibility of trying to be up to date. When the information becomes noise, essentially. Yeah. And the name. Uh, and it's called the infinite contemporaneity device. So the idea is that the device enables you to be contemporaneous in an absolute way. 